the first thing I want to tell you about is, um, is or to encourage you that if you want to use FangMind to set up um, your own account for FangMind. And so to do that, you would click login and and then over here where it says create account, you just click create account now and um, you'll enter your um, email and just create a password. And so, um, and then I'll log into mine right now. I have several accounts. Um, and so the examples that I'll be showing you today um, require uploading lists of IDs or, or uh, coordinates from uh, genome coordinates to do a region search. And so doing, um, uploading lists and saving lists um, requires you to have an account. You can do some things without an account, but most of the, um, the useful tools um, require having an account. So the, um, the tabs above on the top have the, um, the main tools available. There's an area for you to, um, to see uh, things related to your account. For example, lists that you might have saved or, or histories, uh, query histories. Um, uh, I don't have any queries saved, but you can save your own queries and, and I'll show you what query templates are. And then you also can change your password and then a few account details. Um, you can, uh, if you want to share your lists with other users, you can, um, you can create a different name to use for sharing those lists if you want to, if you'd rather not use your regular username. You can get an API access key that allows you to, um, to interact with FangMind programmatically. So, um, so in addition here, we have um, this help tab, which goes to the same read the docs page that I showed you before. And then we have the data sources tab that shows you all the data in the current release. And so this data is divided up into categories. Um, and then each section will um, shows a data set and then different organisms for which that data set is available. And then um, specific releases for that data. And so sometimes the, um, each organism will have a different release. And then there'll also be um, a publication link from where that data came from. And then also the actual the link to the data itself. And so you'll see that we have um, RefSeq and Ensemble genes. Um, we have ortholog and paralogs from several sources, uh, proteins from Unipro, protein domains from Interpro, interactions from BioGrid and Intact, um, several different ontologies, pathways from Kagan Reactome, um, PubMed, QTL from Animal QTLDB, SNP data, and this comes, actually comes from Ensemble variation. Um, and then we also have variant effects from ensemble variation. And then here, um, here's where it lists the specific chromosome assemblies that we have in FangMind. Um, so a little bit about the chromosome assemblies. Um, we, we try to use the, the latest assembly available, but the, the most important rule is that we want the assembly to be supported by both ensemble and NCBI, by, because by having that, the assembly and those resources, it kind of allows um, many other data sources to be available. So, um, so for example, the sheep genome um, that we have is OARV 3.1. That is not the newest genome assembly available, but it's the, um, the latest assembly available at an Ensemble because I think they're waiting for the, the very newest before they, they update their assembly. So we use this assembly since it's in Ensemble. Um, some other things about the data is that you'll notice that that not all data is available for all species. For example, the QTL data, we have only four species here. And so if you ever wonder whether a certain data set is available for your species, you can look at this data source page. Um, and another thing that I would like to point out is that when you use um, a data set in your research and you publish, even if you're using FangMine as your tool, you should, you should cite the data that you used using the paper from that data. So for example, if you use animal QTL data from FangMine, you should still cite the animal QTL DB paper. That's really important for the other resources so that they can continue on um, getting support. And so that, that's why we, put, uh, we, we provide the links. We try to keep these as up to date as possible so that you can just click here to get the, the publication to put in your paper. Let's see. So, um, what else? Where are we going to go next? I'm going to take you back to the home page. Um, and now I'm going to start um, 
showing you how to, to search FangMine in various ways. And so FangMine has some really simple search methods and some pretty sophisticated search, search methods. And so I'll start out with the simplest, which is just a keyword search that you can enter anything into this quick search box. Um, IDs, gene symbols, uh, ontology terms, or just you know keywords from descriptions. And so this actually does a, just a text lookup of the database. And so I'm, I've entered a gene symbol and I'll just click search. And so it searches the database to find all the records that have that text in it. Um, and so it will give you this little, um, this filtering thing on the side that allows you to check to select a category so that you can further filter re your results. So this gene symbol name is actually found in several different kinds of data records. But what I'm really interested in is the gene itself. So I'll click gene here. And then it also um, tells shows which organisms it's found in. So if I'm interested in horse, for example, I could click here. Then now I've narrowed it down to just two different records. And so it shows that it's in both the RefSeq data set and the ensemble data set. So if we just click on one of them, um, it brings you to uh, the gene report page. I, I just want to point out that every so often you get this, um, this strange error that we, we will try to fix in our next release. It's not consistent and it, it doesn't affect your data. So I will just hide it. Um, so the gene report page shows the uh, kind of typical information that you have in a gene report page. Um, but the difference between um, FangMine, which is based on the Intermine platform, is that um, all the, most of the data categories are shown as tables. And so even, even this table with only one row that shows the database cross-reference between the NCBI gene. So we, we have an NCBI gene here, and this is the corresponding ensemble gene. So this is shown as a table. Um, we, have, we have a graphical of the transcripts, but then as we go down, we can see more tables. Um, and so uh, an advantage of, of having tables is that you can export any one of these if you want to. And so you can export any of these into a tab delimited file. And these are the same kind of tables you get whenever you do a query. So the whole, most of it's tables. The gene ontology here is not, not tables. Um, there's pathways shown as a table and so on. So that was, um, so the simplest way of searching was, was using this keyword search and that, that eventually leads to a report page for a certain whatever you entered. But um, in most cases, you want to do something more complex than searching just for one report. Um, and so the power of FangMine is that it integrates many data sources, but, but the fact that it integrates so many sources also makes it very complex um, and difficult to construct your own queries. And so we build these query templates um, and tr we try to predict what kinds of queries people will want to do and then create these templates. And so the query templates are provided here um, as tabs in this bar in the middle of the home page. And so they're divided up into categories according to the data type mostly. Um, this entire gene set category has uh, queries from related to the other categories, but they can be done on, on the entire genome. But um, for example, if I also click on function, you can see that the queries here are related to, um, to gene function. And so I'll just click on one of these, um, gene to pathway, and that opens up a menu um, where you can enter constraints. And so um, it, there's usually some kind of description at the top of what you're supposed to do or what, what the template does. Um, and then here there's boxes that will be pre-filled with just example um, information. That, um, that you can change. So this is a, um, here is where you can enter a gene ID or a gene symbol, and you can select an organism and, and then do a search for the pathways. Um, I'll be showing you this, this part later where you can constrain it to be in a list. We'll do that um, in the next example. But just to do a simple query, I'm not gonna change anything. I'll just click show results to show you what will happen. So you just click show results in the template and then you get the output. And again, it's at, shown as one of these tables. So these tables are very um, manageable. Um, you can 
you can use the icons at the tops of the columns to do different things. You can sort the column um, just by clicking those little up down arrows. I, I just sorted based on the pathway name. You can remove the column altogether. You can just make the column disappear in case you have so many columns you can't see everything. You just hide it for a little while. You can filter. Um, this would be mostly based on quantitative information. And then also you can use uh, this histogram to show you, um, to summarize what's in the column. And that's usually appropriate for um, when you have categories of data in the column. For example, if I click over here on the data set's name on this histogram, I can see that um, this table has two different um, data sets in it. We have 48 rows with reactome pathways and seven rows with keg pathways. Um, and so let's say I only wanted keg pathways. I can click here, click next to keg pathways, and then choose uh, under fil next to filter. Um, I can click this arrow and then restrict the table to only those rows. And then there's only the keg pathways. Um, to export it, you would um, click export over here. And then you have you know, different things you can do. You can rename it. You can choose whether you want all the columns. Let's say I want to turn off the, the organism column, I can click that. You can decide if you want all the rows. Maybe you only want a sample of the table. You can decide if you want to gzip it. And you can add column headers just by clicking here. And then you can look at a preview. So um, this preview is its not especially nice looking, but this is it, it will end up being a tab delimited file. And then these are the, the, the kinds of headings that you get are similar to the headings that we have like, that are showing right now in the, in the table. Um, you also can, um, so I filtered it before, but I decided I want my reactome pathways back so I can undo my filtering step by clicking this button. And so then I can get my, um, all of my data back again. Deb, any questions so far? Oh, no, not yet. OK. Um, let's Did see. Did you want to do the welcome poll? Uh, OK, let's go ahead and do that. So um, we'll just stop right now for a minute. And I have a poll that I'm going to ask you to do. And this is just, um, just to help us with our reporting. And, and this, is, this is anonymous, but it's just to indicate um, what your position is, um, especially because we're, it's really important for us to uh, report our students and postdocs. And I'll just let you, I'll just let you do that while I'm um, continuing on. I think the poll shows up in the chat box, right, uh, Deb? Is it in their chat window? No, it, in my view, it pops over the screen. Oh, okay, okay. Just want to make sure everybody knows where it is. Okay. Oh. Well, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna go on. Um, oh, by the way, I just kind of moused over this contact us thing that reminded me. Um, if, if you have any problems with FangMine, you can click contact us and then it, it will, um, you can send an email to, to us and we can uh, help you. And, and you can use that if you, let's say there's a, you want to do a query, but there's not a template that would work for you, then you can um, let us know and we can create a, a query template for you. Okay, so the, um, the next thing I want to do is show you how to upload a list and do an analysis with a list. So I'm going to click on the list tab. And um, when you click the list tab, you'll end up in one of two places. Either you'll see the upload page or sometimes when you click it, you'll end up on the view page. This is where I can view the list that I've saved, but I'm going to go back. So if you're in the wrong one, just click one of these to get back to where you want. So I want to be on the upload page. Um, and so in this example, um, I have two lists of genes that um, I got from a published paper that's, um, the details for that paper are, are on our website in the examples page. Um, and so these are, uh, this is from a differential expression analysis in chicken. And, um, and so I want to create a list that I can use a back, as a background in, in gene set enrichment. And then I also want to create a list of differentially expressed genes. So I'm going to, um, when you select type, I want to leave it as gene, but just to show you, there's many different types of IDs that you can enter. So I'll leave it at gene. And then I'm going to select the organism, which is 
chicken. And now I'm going to my spreadsheet. So I have, um, I already have my, my list in a spreadsheet. And so all I have to do is um, paste them into a box, this box here. And so this is about a, a list of about um, 20,000 IDs. I just pasted in. If you, uh, if you have the file as a text file with a single column of IDs, you can um, also upload a file instead of pasting in the IDs. So now I will click create a list, create list. And, um, and so the database is doing a lookup to look for these IDs in the database. And so it's, it gives you a preview of, of what it found before you actually save it. And so this says that I entered over 20,000 identifiers, but it found only 15,000 genes. And the reason for that is that this paper is an older paper and it's using an older genome assembly. And so these are ensemble genes, and so the ensemble gene set has changed since then. So it will tell you uh, which, which of the IDs are missing. Um, I'm, this example still works despite a lot of these missing, so I'm gonna just continue on with this um, gene list. And so you can give it a name, you know, there's a default that just tells you a little bit about you know, the timing of when you created it, but I like to have more informative names. And, um, and then so after you enter a name, you can just click save a list of genes. And so there, now I've saved the list. So every time you save a list of anything, no matter what kind of ID it is, there, uh, you'll get to a table that, that just gives you some default information about those IDs. Um, and then if you scroll down, uh, you'll notice these things called widgets where um, it automatically does gene ontology enrichment for every gene list you upload. But I'm not interested in this gene ontology enrichment because this is my background gene list and so I don't, I don't actually want to look at the gene ontology enrichment for that. So I will ignore that. And I'm gonna go, um, first let me show you view. So you can see here that there's my list that I just saved. And these are lists that I've saved before. And um, uh, just to let you know about the colors of the background, the, um, the lists that are, have a white background are all default lists that are available to all users even before you've saved any list. And so these, these represent all the entire gene sets. And then, um, but the, the list with a light purple background or the list that, that I've saved in my account. So now I'm gonna go back to upload and I will upload a, um, my background, I mean, not my background, my differentially expressed genes. So I have that already. And I'll just copy these, paste them in, and click create list again. And so, so again, I lost some of the IDs because this is, this, these are genes from an old assembly. So I'm gonna just um, give it a name and then save this list. So this is, the, um, this is the list that I actually want to do gene ontology enrichment on. So when you scroll down, you'll notice that um, it takes a few moments, and so rather than waiting for this ontology com computation to be done, I'm going to, um, since I've pre prepared for this tutorial, I'm going to uh, use information that's cached. So every time you do an analysis and an ontology enrichment, um, with a list, the results are cached. And so the next time you do it, it's faster. So I'm actually gonna go back to a, a list that I saved earlier to make ontology go a lot faster during this, um, or enrichment goes faster during this tutorial. So, um, so here it is. So there's um, several different enrichment widgets. Um, people are mostly uh, usually interested in the gene ontology and pathway. So, um, so an important thing we have some important uh, things you need to do to make sure you don't have false positives in your results. Um, and one of them is to make sure you select the correct background gene list. And um, the reason why you need to do that is because FangMind has two gene sets for each species. And by default, FangMind will use all the gene ontology terms um, for that species for the background. But the problem with that is that that would include gene ontology terms from two gene sets, and you should really only use one at a time. 
And then not only that, but we had our own background gene list that we got specifically for this experiment. And these are all the genes that were expressed in the experiment. So what you do is you, here where it says background population, you click change. And then you'll be provided with a pull down menu that gives you all the lists that you could use as a background. And so this will include all those um, gene sets that were that I showed you that were shown with a back, uh, white background, but it also includes um, the list that, that you make. And so here I'll click on chicken BG for background. That's the one I made earlier today to make it go faster. And there it, it changed. And so you might not notice you know, that it actually changed much, but what it really affects is these, um, the marginal values. It, um, if you have an incorrect background, it's really gonna affect these in which, which um, you know, you may have some marginal um, uh, terms that, that are actually false positives if you don't correct the background. Um, and so you can also um, change, uh, you know, which ontology, and then um, you can change your, your test correction. And so the Benjamini Hochberg tends to not be as stringent, so you'll find, usually find um, more terms when you use that one. Um, and then here we'll just go for a pathway enrichment. And so this, um, this data set was only ensemble genes, but KEG, when they um, create their pathways, they only use genes from NCBI. And so that means that um, the ensemble genes don't have KEG pathways and you will always get no enrichment found. You can see number of genes not analyzed. That's the total number of genes we had, 1097. So, but we do have reactome pathways, so you can change the data set. And there, there we have some results. Um, and then also, again, you have to change your background because um, you have to change background for each widget separately. So just to adjust that, and then uh, you, know, you can change your test correction if you want to. Um, and so you would, uh, if you wanna download it, you click here, and then just to show you what a downloaded, um, oops, that's not the right thing. Here's, oh, here it is. This is what a downloaded um, file looks like. So this is a tab delimited file that has um, all the kinds of results that would, you would wanna use in your publication, maybe as the supplemental data. So there's the, there's the um, term name, and the corrected p-value, the, um, all the genes that are within that term, and then the actual Go ID itself is, is in the last column. Let's see. Um, any questions yet? Nope. Nope, yes. no, question. no questions. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to just show you now what would you do if you actually wanted to look at keg pathways, but you only have ensemble genes. So um, you can use, um, you can go to this alias and, and database XRES cross reference tab and click that. And then there is a, a, a template that allows you to um, convert from gene IDs to their cross-reference ID. So we'll click that. And um, we want to convert IDs for all of our differentially expressed genes. So we can click um, constrain to be in, and then we can use the pull-down menu to select our, our list of genes. And so there it is. And then so you just click show results. And, um, and there are the results. And so there's the, um, these, this is the original gene list here under gene ID and then database cross-reference identifier. These are the, um, the NCBI IDs. And this works vice versa. So if I would have entered RevSeq IDs, then I would have those over here and I would have the ensemble cross-references. So, um, so now I want to save my, um, my NCBI ID. So I can click save as list here. And then you have, um, Notice when I mouse over it, it shows different columns. Of course, I don't want to save the organism as a list. And then those are the actual genes. I don't need to save those. I already have those. But here is the database cross-references. For some reason, they're not highlighted, but it will still work. So I'll click on this. And then um, I can enter a new name. So I can say, and so now um, I click Create List, and then you can see it up here. I could either look at it or I can go to my, my list tab and, and there it is. And so if I really wanted to do this, this whole thing over again, I'd also need to um, 
change my, uh, convert my background gene list, and then I'd be able to, to click on this and do the gene ontology and, or do all the enrichments for the RefSeq data set, including K. But I'm not going to do all that now because I want to have time to show you some other things. But basically, you would re repeat the process to, to get your background gene list in RefSeq and then to repeat the process of gene ontology enrichment. Um, so the next thing I would like to show you is how to do a region search. So this is, um, for this search, you upload a list of genome coordinates and you can um, identify different features um, located within those regions. So, um, so each species has a, a different set of features available just depending on what kind of data was available when we loaded the database for that species. Um, our example is going to be with pig, and, um, and notice that the assembly automatically is changed to the correct assembly when I did that. So um, in this example, we're going to upload um, regions for uh, a trait called corpus luteum number. So this is uh, QTL regions that we, um, we actually downloaded from FangMind, but they originally came from animal QTL DB. So, um, and I, I would like to um, identify the genes within those regions. So I'm gonna um, click next to select feature types to unclick all these other things. And then I'm gonna just click gene here. And so you can, um, there's a few different formats that you can enter for your coordinates, but the one, I think the easiest one is the tab delimited format. And so I'm going to go to an Excel spreadsheet where I have these. And so the, the format is, the first column is the chromosome ID, the second column is the start coordinate, the third column is the end coordinate. And if this would be, if I had SNPs instead of um, these large regions, the, I still have to have both a start and an end, and so if it's a SNP, it'd actually be the same number for both start and, and end. So I'll just copy these into the text box, and so the nice thing is when you do this from an Excel spreadsheet, it actually maintains the tab delimited format when you paste it in. Um, or I could have um, uploaded a text file if I had that in a tab delimited format, so either way. Um, you have a choice of extending the region on both sides, which is something you might do with something like SNPs, but I'm not gonna do that for these since these are large regions. And then you can also, um, if you wanted your search to be strand specific, you could do that by checking this box, but I don't think that's appropriate for this kind of looking for genes within QTL regions. So I will click search. And so, um, so it does a search, the search is pretty fast, but this one is extra fast because I've, I did the search earlier today and so it's cached. But so you might, you know, you might wait a minute for the search to be completed depending on how many regions you upload. Um, and so this is an intermediate uh, result page that provides, um, it provides all of your results in a table separated out by region. So here's the first region and then all the genes within that region and their location. And so notice that we have both um, NCBI genes and ensemble genes uh, listed here. And so and this is a very large region, but if we scroll down pretty far, we can see we'll eventually get to the next region. Let's see, there it was. And so each one of these regions has, um, you allows you to export data specifically for that region in different formats. Or if you wanted to create a list of genes for that region, you could do that. But the thing normally probably you'd want to do if you uploaded a whole set of regions is to do everything all together, which you can do at the top of the table. And so what I wanna do is actually save a list of genes because I wanna be able to do gene ontology enrichment of these genes. So I will click go here and then then these, uh, the, the list has been saved and we're back in a page that looks just like the list analysis page. So it's the same output. Um, the, only, the main difference when you save a, uh, a list from regions, you don't get to give it uh, your own name. Instead, it just gives it a name that looks like this, all regions gene list, and then it just assigns a number depending on how many you already have. Um, you can actually go into your MyMind account and change names of, of these lists to something that would be more informative. So, um, so now we have a list that includes um, both RefSeq and ensemble genes. And so, of course, this gene ontology enrichment is automatically done. 
but this is this is also not an appropriate result because um, we have two gene lists mixed together. So so every time you do an enrichment, you need to read this little section here to remind yourself of things that you should do. And so this first list tells you what the first item tells you what to do if you have different you know multiple gene sets in your list. It, and I'll show you what to do, but. But I just want to point out that every time you do an enrichment, you should you should read this and make sure you do this. Otherwise, you'll get false positives. It's, it could be that there's actually no enrichment at all, and you'll have a whole bunch of things looking enriched because you have twice as many genes as you should have. So, um, so what you need to do is actually um, filter to to save each gene source separately. And so you do this with the view column summary in the. Uh, above the gene source column and so you click on that and it actually spends some time doing a doing a lookup and it actually takes you know a few minutes so i'm going to cheat again and i'm going to go to my older cached list which is here so that it will go fast this is actually the same list that i saved earlier today um, and so then when i click this it goes very fast and so this is what will eventually happen it, it will it could take a minute or two to to do this the first time you do a particular list um, so you can see I have, it's about half and half RefSeq and Ensemble genes, so I can just click one of them um, and then say restrict table to matching rows. And so now I have only RefSeq genes. And so then I'm going to make a new list, which will be only RefSeq. So I'll create a list for that. And then after that, I can undo that filtering step and then click this histogram again and select the ensemble genes and then redo this so that I can, I can just save the ensemble genes. There, so now I have two lists. So um, I'm going to scroll down and show you that we still have this enrichment here. But the thing is, even though I, uh, I separated out the list, th these results are still the same. These are still the same original ones that we had before. So these are still not good results to look at. So in order to get your correct results, you actually need to, um, you need to click on your, the list name to actually recompute the enrichment. And so I'm going to, again, use my, the cache version of this so it goes faster. So I'm gonna go down to the, um, down here to this one I saved earlier. So when I click on this, every time you click on a list, the, um, the enrichment computations are redone. But if it's cached like this, it will, they'll, uh, it will be very fast. And so here, now these are the appropriate results for the RefSeq list. And um, again, I want to change my background population because I still have the incorrect background population. But in the case of a region search, it's more likely that you're going to want to use the entire genome, the whole gene set as your background. So that was a RefSeq gene set. So I'll, I'll click on this one, the RefSeq all genes in there. Um, it recomputed and then, you know, you can, you can look at your various ontologies and, um, and change your test correction. And then um, same with this. So most likely um, if it doesn't show up with a, uh, Enrich keg here, it probably won't show up when we have when we um, change the background, but we'll just see. No, nope, it didn't change, so we still don't don't have enrich keg here. But we can look at reactomes. Um, so also, I'll point out that once you change this background once, you can change all these other settings, and the background will will remain the same, so it'll be the correct one. Um, and then I won't go through the um, the same thing. So you can. Normally what you'd want to do is then also find out what kind of results you get with Ensemble, but, but basically it's the same steps that I just showed you except for you're using Ensemble, and so I, I won't go through that again. Um, let's see. So something related to doing the region search that I need to point out is that um, it requires the use of the chromosome ID that we use as primary chromosome IDs in FangMind. And so this can be problematic because your data might have different IDs. It might has, have GemBank or RefSeq, or it might be, you know, it could be numbers or it could have like CHR1. So we provide a, um, 
a template query. It's actually found in entire gene set, but it's actually related to the genome assembly. This is where you can get, um, if you, you can search a genome assembly for all the IDs. It provides a lookup table for all the IDs. And so if we, if we look at the, the pig assembly, you can see um, all the various IDs here. So the, um, the ID that we use um, that's, that should be used in the region search is in this one called chromosome ID. Um, and you can see these variations that are, are found in different places. And so this, um, we, we get these, uh, the assembly report provided at NCBI will provide the IDs that were used in submitting the assembly and, so, um, and also the GemBank and NCBI IDs. And so we, um, we provide all of those here so that if you have these in your spreadsheet instead of these, you can, um, you can use a, this mapping to, um, to correct your, your spreadsheet before you upload those into the region search. We hope to, in the future, have region search be a little bit more flexible so that it will also recognize these alternative IDs, but that will not happen in the re next release. Any questions yet? Um, no, no questions. Okay. Um, so now um, I'm going to actually go into some, uh, I guess, like a few more advanced topics. So one of them, let's see, I'll go over using the, uh, the column manager. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to go back and do um, this database cross reference with my differentially expressed genes. Actually, I'll do two things. I'll go, the first thing I'm going to do is, um, no, let's see, I don't want to show query builder now. Let me just show column manager. I'll just click show results. So let's say if we, uh, we have these results in our table, but we, we realize that we want more, we also want gene symbols. So after you have a table, you can, um, you can click on manage columns and it allows you to do different things. Um, you can, one thing is that you can set up a sort to, to sort on multiple columns, which I'm not going to show you now because I don't think I want to do that now. But you can also, um, you can get rid of columns. And I think the most common thing that I do is add columns with this column manager. So when you, um, when you choose that, it's going to um, show you kind of a tree based on the data type that, the main data type of the table, which here is, is uh, the gene. Um, and it will show different uh, kinds of uh, data attached to the gene. And so um, the things shown in uh, highlighted in gray are columns that are already um, in the table, but let's say we want to add the symbol, which actually is up here, we can click on this. And then I also want the symbol for the database cross-reference, so I can scroll down until I see that there's a database cross-reference, and there's, this is actually the, for the cross-reference gene itself. And so you can see the identifier here, and then there's the gene symbol for that. So I can say add two new columns. And then there they are. Um, let's say I want, I want my gene symbol for the gene to be next to the gene ID. I can use this up arrow to get it in the right place. And then I want to move this one up to there. So, and then apply changes. And then now we have our, um, our gene symbols next to our gene IDs. Oops, actually that one came out in the wrong, I put this in the wrong place. But anyway, so, but you can, you can be sure to which one is which, because one will say cross-reference symbol and the other one says gene symbol. Um, we have a few other things that um, I guess I'll, if I have time, I'll show you later. But something that I want to show you now is, is a little bit about the query builder. Um, and so this, for this, I'm going to actually go back to um, a template query. And um, I'm going to show you what happens if you click edit query. So when you click Edit Query, you actually go to the Query Builder page um, that shows the query that we built to create this template. Um, and so what this um, provides is this thing called a model, model browser on the left side and then the actual query um, on the right side. And so this model browser is sort of a tree-like structure that where the, the root of the tree is the data object that, that this query is about. Um, and then you can see um, things that are, have uh, 
rectangles in blue, these are actually things that have been selected as output. And so you can see in the query overview, you can also see these. And so these will be columns that will be outputted. Um, so the thing that I, I'm just going to show you now is, uh, is let's say you wanted some more information to go, to go with this. Um, let's say I want to add, I want to add the gene length for the gene. I could click show and then you can see length here. See, it just got added. And then let's say I want to, uh, um, what do I want to do? What else do I want to do? Let's say I want to constrain the data set. Actually, I'm not sure if this is where it may will work. Maybe I shouldn't show it. Um, well, let's just try. I can click data set here, and it actually brought me to the area in the table for this path. This is the pathway data set. Um, and this is the um, this is the data set itself. And so remember, we have both KEG and reactome pathways. And so I can click const constrain, and then, ooh, I, I chose a hard one because there's so many data sets to choose from. Let me see if I can find the right one. This is why it might not work. Um, okay, I'm gonna choose KEG. And then I'm gonna add that to the query. Um, and so if I scroll down, so you can see now this constraint has been added. If I scroll down, it'll show, it will show the columns that are gonna be output. Um, and let's say I want to move this gene length to be um, right here, right after gene ID. There it is. Um, and I click show results and hope that it works. And it does. Oh, good. <laughs> so before when we did this query, you, um, you remember that the reactome pathway data set um, showed up. But now it's only the keg pathways because we added that constraint. And, um, and we also have the gene length showing up here. So that was just a kind of a little preview about the query builder. There's a lot more um, to learn about it. You know, for example, how to build a query from scratch. And so um, at some point, we'll have a more advanced tutorial where we will provide more details about how to build your own queries. But in the meantime, if there's any query that you want and you can't, you can't get it to work by you know, trying to edit it yourself, you can remember to click the contact us and um, we will help you with it.